Welcome to Secrets from the Saddle podcast. I'm Sylvie Daou, your host, fellow cyclist, bike club founder, cycling coach, bike race junkie, just truly super passionate about cycling. My journey with cycling started 20 years ago when I opened a spin studio, started a women's race team, and founded a women's only cycling club called Cycle Fit Chicks. I'm super thrilled to reveal all aspects that make the world of cycling operate. I'm so excited to be able to bring you interesting people from around the world, pro cyclists, recreational cyclists, coaches, event organizers, bike shop owners, everything and everyone you need to know or ever wondered about when it comes to cycling. I know you'll enjoy this episode. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Secrets to Saddle, All Things Cycling Podcast with your host, Sylvie Doe, who's been on a freaking road trip for the last two weeks, attending two events. One is a gravel event. One is a road event. My gravel event was in Kansas, Emporia, Kansas, for Unbound XL. That's a separate episode uh, that you'll have to check out, but... So go back to the, the uh, podcast and find my race report about Unbound because it's epic, it's painful, <laughs> it was something that um, I, like, when I finished, I, I didn't even want to talk about bikes, I didn't want to think about it, and honestly, um, and I had a, a ton to process over that race. Um, just because I didn't get to finish it. So, but that's all I'm going to say. I have lots of things to say about that. So make sure you go back to that episode and check it out. I'm going to also, it, that one will be a good one to watch on YouTube because I will be showing you my bike and everything I did um, to prepare my bike and also uh, things that I put on my bike and things like that. So that won't be good for YouTube. Go check it out. So what I'm going to be talking about is the race, the ride to conquer cancer. And so I chose to do it again this year. Uh, did actually active fundraising. Uh, I raised more than I did last year. Last year I raised 700. It's actually a minimum of 2,500, by the way. Uh, I think I I, I wasn't penalized because I started really late. I wasn't even because of COVID. I wasn't even sure if I, you know, if I was going to be able to attend. Um, so anyways, but this year, thank you everyone uh, for donating. I, ra I raised over $3,000 and you can still donate to the Ride to Conquer Cancers for the Princess Margaret Research Center in Toronto, which is one of the top five leading research centers. So they do research on all cancers. Okay, so if you, you donate, you can choose which cancer research you want your money to go to. So if it's prostate or colon or lung, whatever, breast cancer, you can donate it there. Um, so yeah, I chose to do it again, and I reached out, and I got a couple girlfriends to come with me. So I had two. I had Jennifer and Jennifer Salm and Wendy McLeod. Love you, girls. It was amazing to have friends. Uh, last year, I did it by myself. I drove up there by myself. Um, stayed at Wendy's place, actually, and I said, next year, girlfriend, you're coming with me. Um, and it was a ton of fun. So here's why it was a ton of fun. And if you're listening to this and it really intrigues you, I'm going to be going back next year. I believe that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, and, uh, basically you can start, I'm not sure when they do the transition. It's somewhere in the fall where you can start your 2024 pledge page and you start raising money like six months beforehand so if you're worried about raising the money i mean six months to raise twenty five hundred dollars it's not very long you just keep you know sharing with friends sharing on social media sharing your story blah 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 um 
And so what I did is I wrapped it around um, the unbound because it was two events, two weeks totally, 724 kilometers written. So I put it all together and that was just me. You don't have to do that, but it just so happens that's what, that's how these, these two events fell in my calendar. And literally after this, I'm not doing anything else. I'm gonna be hanging out at home, uh, doing some group rides, doing some gardening, taking care of my chicken poop, <laughs> you know, stuff. Stuff outside of cycling and, and you know, life stuff. Um, hey, and going to see my son's uh, flag football games. So, but here's the thing. I have literally been on the road for two weeks. I drove to Kansas. I participated in Unbound. And then I took um, four, five days to come across to be in Toronto Friday morning to join up with Wendy and Jen and um, go to check in and everything. So needless to say, I have been sitting in my car for a very long time. I think I've done over 6,000 kilometers. However, it's been really great. Like I've organized my car. I did lots of camping. I saw lots of great places. And, um, and I won't regret it. Like, you know, through my podcast, I've met some really great people. And through my training, pro winter training program. Um, so I went and I visited my friends friend Damien Foley who is in Smithville, Illinois. And he has the um, Smithville bike co-op in Smithville. And um, he also runs site some gravel events. And I can't remember them off the top of my head, but you can go and check out his podcast episode just uh, search Damien Boley, B-O-L-E-Y, and you'll find it. Um, and he was with Peggy. I didn't get to meet her, but it was so cool. And he offered me to stay in his Airbnb. Uh, it wasn't being used, which was amazing. Um, nice to have a bed and just laundry, you know. And, um, and this guy's entrepreneurial, man. Like, he actually has a, um, a kayak and paddleboard rental business at the local uh, swimming hall, swimming hall, Smithville Reserve uh, Lake. And uh, so anyways, I got to do a little bit of paddle boarding, which is nice. Like, honestly, my legs were in such pain for like two days. And my crotch uh, took all week to uh, scab over. Yeah, the, you know, yeah, scab over and heal itself a little bit before this weekend. So I'll be sharing that in my Unbound uh, race report because all was leading up with Unbound. But I did also get to meet my friend Carl, who was in my winter training program. And he, kudos to Carl, uh, shout out to him, is getting ready for coast to coast, the Michigan race from Michigan to Huron, uh, which I can't wait to hear his report. He has been having some great gains from my program. Um, and I'm really looking forward to launching it um, shortly at the end of the summer. Um, so, race report. Again, a five-star event. Like, food. I don't know. I have not eaten so much food at a cycling event. Um, we're trying to figure out how much of our race registration or fundraising goes to food. And we're thinking probably about $100 a person, like food and alcohol, because everything is provided, my friends, wine and beer and food and like along the course. And as soon as you get there, 
and there and if you're in the corporate group advertisers so i so when i started putting it out there i had jen and uh wendy join me and i was like oh well there's i was hoping to have a bigger contingent of women to tell you the truth however i didn't so then last year i reached i um gained a contact from Scotiabank because I ended up riding with a bunch of guys. And uh, and so I gained uh, one of their contact information um, for their team. And so I reached out to them and said, hey, um, do you take people who are not Scotiabank employees to be on your team and we all know like it's all about numbers um for these corporate groups the amount of people and their fundraising numbers um so they said yeah sure so and i also know that they have a corporate tent so as soon as you arrive you can go to the corporate tent you can get food they have appetizers and food and they give away free swag so not stupid <laughs> <laughs> this is also where the fun is and the networking is and everything. So, um, so we joined them and so we're part of their group. So there's like a hundred, I think there's 120 in the, or maybe there's 160, but only 120 actually rode. Um, so in the group, there's 100, I think there's 160, but I'm not sure. But they said 120 were there physically participating. Um, so I arrived uh, Friday morning around 10 o'clock at Jen's place. I had spent the night at Erie, Michigan. Yeah, no, sorry, Erie, Pennsylvania. I could have put how many how many states I passed through uh, in the last two weeks. So Erie, Pennsylvania highly highly recommend go there and stay with the family um stay at sarah's campground sarah's campground in erie pennsylvania um and uh really nice she's like she's like hey do you want to as it was actually cheaper than the last one place i stayed at um She's like, hey, do you want to stay on the beach? On the beach. I'm like, okay, that sounds really cool. But it was, it was so loud. The crashing of the waves, like being like, you know, 10 feet from the waves. I could not sleep. So my car is parked at the other end of the campground. So I basically got on my bike and biked over there and slept in my car. Anyway, so that morning I got up super early. I left around six o'clock and I got into Toronto at 10. And so got to Jen's place. I had a quick nap. I really needed a nap. Um, and then we biked, we drove over to uh, the, um, Expo, the Toronto Expo area to sign in and get our jersey and all that stuff some free swag pick up whatever they're good with um and then we met up with wendy and then we went back and uh, we got ready we went out for supper which was really nice and then we came back and um, we uh we went to bed <laughs> no, here's a race report we went to bed uh, we got, I got up at five to start eating and everything was prepared. We basically, well, 5.30, we basically, no, five o'clock. We basically left at uh, like six. to get her you know, breakfast and things and uh and so so yeah so we left at four to seven uh, because everything was getting ready at eight and they left at eight thirty uh and then 
Yeah, so we biked over with these massive dump tanks, <laughs> right? So because we were supposed to be in tents and, uh, and the, what I did last year is I signed up for a tent, we signed up for a tent, but once I got there and once uh, I was invited to a corporate tent and we were in we found out like this year, we found out that a couple of people dropped out and they gave up their room. So we grabbed their room and, and we still had all of our stuff in our like for a tent. So anyways, we had the huge duffel bags, must have been like 50 pounds, um, you know, like clothes and toiletries and shit like that, sleeping bag. Um, and we biked on down along the lake shore. It was about 5K. Uh, we had to check in our bags. And then uh, we got ready to, uh, we found each other and they have a whole spread of breakfast. So uh, uh, egg McMuffins, bananas, yogurt, like you literally don't have to eat. You just show up and eat. You got your coffee. You go to the bathroom, the event starts. So we used to say like, that's what we did. We ate a little bit extra. Um, and the event started at, at 8.30. Now, when you're there, there's like 4,000 people there. So you know what it's like if you run a marathon or a running race when there's like a couple thousand people, you literally are sifting through people for the first 25 <laughs> uh, till the first pit stop where you could go and you could gorge on more food. Um, so it was kind of like that. You're like riding with large groups of people. Now, the nice thing is, is that they start at the other end at uh, Niagara. So you can ride from Niagara to um, Hamilton to uh, to McMaster as well. And we met a couple guys in Scotia on the Scotia team that did that. So it's way less people. It's like 400 people. And he said that was so much better because less people, less bunching, you know, like you could ride it. It's like, you know, maybe it's a little bit up from the, the escarpment, but it was, he said it was way better. And so there you go, like that's 125 from there. But in any case, I did the hammer route last year, which is 160. So I'm glad I did the 100 this year. It was nice to see like what the rest stops look like. Like they're, they were just like full on, like everything you had your, your sun tan table and chamois butter. You had water, you had electrolytes, you had um, uh, all sorts of food to pick from. Well, not all sorts of food, like, you know, like Greece food. They had waffles, they had, oh my God, they had um, tarts, like, like, oh my God, you know, those tarts with that. Uh, like sugar, uh, sugar tarts. Oh my God, my faves. Um, bananas, all sorts, you know, things that you can pick and bring with you. And then you carry on. And so there's, there's like basic rest stops, like every 25 days. So you can be new at it and do this because it's sizable chunks, right? Like 25, 25, 25. And you're basically eating at every rest stop. So, like, honestly, I I'm still digesting what I ate today because, um, yeah, just ate so much. And then you get to the lunch area. So there's a lunch stop where you pick up a box, and it was awesome. It was like chickpea salad with chicken, and you had uh, brownies. And um, and apple slices, and you can pick up a pop, and this is all covered, right? And then you finish that, and you take off, and then you go to the next stop. And then by the time you get to McMaster's, um, you're so full. Well, no, you have 
but you're ready to, you know, just relax. And so what you do is you hang up your bike, you drop, you go grab your bag, and then you go into the, into like basically the, uh, the, the, the tent area, the tent area, like where you can sign up for next year. You've got, um, you know, where you eat, where you're the bar. And then you go down this corridor, which is all the corporate tents. So you go to your corporate tent, they have like, sh you know, she lounges and like top high tables to sit at. And then they have like all these food, this uh, plates of food and you, can, you got a bartender. And so it's really fun to join a corporate group. Oh yeah, here's one thing that happened when we're on route. So we come up to this railway crossing and it's going off and this train like slowly chugs by, he's chugging and then it stops. And we're all like, oh my God, what the hell is going on? And it's, we all sat there for like 10 minutes and, and everybody is just like piling up, piling up, piling up. So we felt like, hundreds of people sitting there and then this one cop goes okay you have a detour you're gonna go you're gonna go left left and um there's a bridge that goes over the train so i know this train was like waiting for another train and so we did like 10k detour but you know after last weekend i mean i was like oh 100k a couple of hours and i'm like whatever whatever and then and so and it was just really good on my legs um i did start having crotch soreness again um but that's just to expect it like i'm not finished uh the healing process hasn't finished um but in any case so there's some really good little rolling hills on the second half or the last half. And um, it was just funny to see people on there. Cause like I teach a hill climbing clinic on people who in such poor years. Like, I don't know how many people I saw walking because they're still in their big chain ring. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, so that's why I just love teaching hills because it really makes a huge difference to be able to power up those hills. And I don't know if people were looking at me, but honestly, those hills were felt good. They felt good going up them. And uh, yeah, and I was just looking around, you know. Um, so, and then by, by like, 2.33, we arrived and um, went straight to the corporate tent. And you know, like there's very few women. I guess maybe there's there's a small handful, like maybe three, four that were there. And three of us show up and we're just like, you know, they're like, so uh, where do you work in Scotia? We're like, we don't work in Scotia. We just riding for Scotia. I go, yeah, but my mortgage is at Scotia or my mortgages, as that's been shown. Um, so, but really great guys. We, we were able to meet a, a handful of them because not everybody was there. Uh, we missed the team picture. Uh, but yeah, we just sort of hung out there. Uh, kudos and shout out to Steven. He was the guy who uh, posted about um, a room. And uh, so we stayed in kind of like, not with him, but with him. Um, in the dorms that we were in, it's like you got two double beds, like, and on either side, and then one joining bathroom, one shared bathroom. Um, so that's just really interesting accommodations. But anyways, uh, we had a bed, and that was cool. So, so then we went, we went, oh my God. Ooh. 
we went and uh, got showered and changed and came down for supper. We almost missed supper. <laughs> Feeding too many appetizers. Um, almost missed supper and missed out on like half the food that they had available, but whatever. It wasn't really super hungry. Um, and uh, went back to the back to the corporate tent and, and just uh, chat up. Oh, um, shout out to Anastasia, who was the coordinator. She did an amazing job getting us like all sorts of kit gear and stuff. Um, and yeah, and like, and then things kind of like wound down at nine. As it's probably good, probably good to get to bed early um because we had a team picture at 6 20 and then it's a good thing to leave early because you just well we experienced getting all sorts of like big groups um like Vimo, like bank of montreal they had a huge peloton of people but moving really really manageably, which was really good to see because if you have a good steady pace and strong people in the front, anybody can sit in there and uh, ride 100K. So it was good to see groups like that. Um, and again, like you have to climb to get out of the escarpment and um, before you know it you're at the first stop and you just chow down on stuff and then not too far later is the lunch stop <laughs> like literally straight away and where you pick up like uh, some wraps um, i just picked them up we just picked them up and we ate them further down the next stop because like it's, it was just too much food too much food. And if you like eating food and riding your bike, well, this is for you. If you're looking to meet men, ladies, this event is for you because there is all sorts of corporate guys there. Uh, guys, I guess like there's lots of ladies there too, but just obviously more men to women. Um, and I just, we just really enjoyed it. Like today, uh it was 120k to get back to the finish and the finish is just like a big feast again more beer more wine uh burgers uh salads and then what happens is that as soon as you finish you basically there's a transport truck like a 10 wheeler and it's open to the back to you and you just walk your bike there volunteers will take your bike and load it into the transport as soon as it's done it takes off for toronto right because we all you have to get we have to get back to toronto so after you finish eating you can go have a quick quick shower it's nothing extravagant and just really like just a rinser uh, you get changed, and then you hop on one of the Greyhound buses to go back to Toronto. So it's like an hour, almost two hour ride. And as soon as you get there, your bike is waiting for you. And, and you get on your bike and you go home. And it is so well organized. Steve Berger is um, like, a whiz at this he used to run 24 hours summer so no 24 hours of adrenaline um and uh, the only thing is that coming into the finish there was no like one kilometer 500 meters that kind of thing because i was i was honestly i was like oh my god what i was like really hammering it for the finish and i'm like where's the finish you know like i just like i was going forever um and then i saw the tents in the distance like i remembered from before because we're really really close to the um the falls the niagara falls which is really cool uh we're kind of like right on top of it but you know 
is such a well-run event. Like, it's just highly recommended. Um, if you don't like to fundraise, just try it. It is really kind of empowering being able to share your story and get people um, engaged in your story and why you want to do that. It's like, my mom's a breast cancer survivor. Um, and uh, now she has heart disease. Like she had a triple bypass surgery like months ago. Um, and, and we all know somebody who's died of cancer of some sort. So, you know, it just goes to a good cause. And the thing that I like about it is that it's Canadian. And I know my money is not going to be like some breast cancer, like cloud in the sky where really like 25% goes to actually research because it's such a business. Like breast cancer is, I don't like giving to breast cancer uh, charities because it, uh, for me, I don't even think uh, half the money gets there, but anyways so here i am uh the weekend is done on my way home yes i'm recording this in my car i have to stay awake no, i'm okay really. um i'm almost to ottawa and i wanted to get this done but what can i say like i can't say anything more this year, I did it a little differently, joined a team officially. Um, and the thing about corporate teams is that a lot of them are in the Toronto area. And I get it, it's a Toronto kind of event. But, you know, all these banks have different branches. And why not, you know, um, market it to, you know, branches? other branches in, in Ottawa. And, uh, yeah. So if you have any questions, DM me about this. Um, I'd love to answer them. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, like you can start early. You still have time after the event to uh, raise the money. And uh, yeah, and if you give yourself enough time, you definitely can raise that amount of money. If you're really resourceful, you could do a couple little events to raise the money. Um, and uh, and try it, try it, and don't let yourself get bogged down with the the distance. You could do a one day event. So you can get shuttled back at the end of the evening um, on Saturday if you don't want to do two days. So that's another great option. You can be back in your bed by 10 o'clock um, and you had, you know, you're able to participate and take in all the uh, all the events. But you know, there's so many things that you could you can help out and to improve. And one of these things is like just helping getting more women on bikes to these events. Because, um, you know, talking to the team, like the Scotia team, is that there's some people who just didn't train, who didn't have time to train um, for the event. And so I'm just looking like, hey, great opportunity to put my winter training program out there and um, help people get trained, which is what I do. And what I'm really gonna start doing is, um, is cycling coaching. You know, I think it's, I always said that I didn't really like um, having that commitment, but I think it's something really, that's really needed and I really do enjoy helping and making, making, you know, helping people get more confident and more skillful at riding bikes. So 
So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting it out there. One-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. I haven't put it together yet, but it's going to be on my website um, by the end of summer. So you can think about, you know, what's your summer experience like so far? Like, how are you comparing yourself? And yeah, maybe you should be comparing yourself to those who have trained with a trainer or trained effectively over the summer, over the winter, and get yourself one step closer to um, a higher level of fitness. Like, to be honest, you never really arrive. Like, I've been training for like 20 years. You know, only now do I feel like I'm actually getting better and stronger. But I've got to continue riding. I can't just, you know, like I had a really strong two two weeks of events. Like I've never done that much mileage ever in a month, ever. <laughs> Check my Strava. Go follow me on Strava. So in order to keep up and building on the fitness, like I still, I need to continue riding. I don't need to ride at that volume. That's crazy. I don't have the time for that. <laughs> but riding at that, like riding volume and, you know, put it into your schedule. Like how much can you commit to or dedicate to on a weekly basis? Like what's it going to look like? Is it Wednesday, Saturday? Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, like three times a week, you know, true cycling or some interval training, whatever. Um, so, and, you know, little ways to get more in is to do some trainings and then ride home so you get more volume. I mean, that's what I had to do um leading up to unbound like i didn't have all this time to go out and do volumes of writing i just didn't like i had to work i had to coach i had family um you know and so i literally doubled it up with a lot of like uh meetings in, in, the, in town uh, my training that's where i got to do like 100k a week I just added it up to things I was doing and, and, um, and it really worked, you know, like, so there you have it. That's the ride to conquer cancer 2023. That's my second year. Um, and it's just a great, great route. Well put together event. Um, I highly recommend it. Oh, excuse me. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm going to put a link below. Um, you can continue to donate to my fund, or you can go and check out the link itself and check out the full event. Um, I think on Facebook, they're ready to conquer cancer. You can check out all the pictures. You can go to my Facebook or Instagram page and check out my posts. Um, yeah. And so I hope you have a great evening. And uh, don't forget to share this with somebody who maybe you would like to uh, do this with. And then when you see me post for 2024, you can join me with a corporate team yeah and then you know you're just with a bigger group doesn't mean you gotta ride with them i didn't we didn't ride with them at all um they're just all over the place um so yeah make sure you have your friends and join me and then we join the um the corporate team yeah all right have a great evening. Don't forget to ride your bike. Be intentional about it. Uh, keep your eye on my um, on my website, sylviedow.ca, um, for the winter training program. 
it will be up there in August and I will start talking more about it then, but you can go and check out some of the things that I have going there now. I will be adding more right, uh, learn to, uh, sorry, bike maintenance clinics and a learn to ride clinic, which is really, really huge for building up confidence and skills to ride safely with others. So with that, have an amazing day and we'll see you on the next podcast. Don't forget to check out my Unbound XL YouTube video um, about my race report. All right, take care. Bye. Thank you so much for spending this time with me on the Secrets from the Saddle podcast, learning more about sighting people, places, and things that make cycling such an exciting sport. I am so glad you stopped by today. Please leave me a review if you feel so moved to do so. I would love to hear your feedback. And if you could take one second to share this episode with someone you think would enjoy it, I would be forever grateful. Also, if you could please leave me a review if you feel so moved by going to iTunes and leaving me an honest thought and an honest comment telling me what you think and most importantly, tell me what you'd like to hear more of. It would really help me to bring more great, inspiring cycling stories to you. Until then, have an amazing day. Make sure you ride your bike. And don't forget to visit my YouTube channel if you'd like to see the full version of this podcast live.